Hello, welcome to Stained Glass class. Today we are going to be uh, working on soldering techniques. Um, it's the kind of thing that everybody is always trying to improve. Nobody does a perfect solder job, so everybody's trying to improve. So I'm just going to show you the basics. I'm not going to pretend that we're going to get into a huge amount of detail on this particular video, but I want to show you the basics. So if you're trying to refresh yourself, if you haven't soldered for a while, um, or if you've just finished your beginner class, then you might find that a lot of these things that were perhaps mentioned earlier on will, will make more sense to you now. So uh, the first thing we like to do, obviously I just boiled a few pieces of bevels to use as an example here. Uh, but normally you would have your pattern and you'd put it down on your work surface. We like to work on these ceiling tiles. Um, you can buy them two feet by three feet. And uh, this is obviously just part of one. Um, but this um, Morton layout block system is a really nice way to keep everything from moving around when, you, when you're tacking it together, uh, which is the first uh, step of the soldering process. Uh, the bars come in many different lengths. Uh, this is the largest one, and this is the smallest one, and as you can see, there's many different sizes in between. So essentially, I will line things up so that um, this, uh, the bars go just on the actual outside line of the glass. You don't want it to be big, so you don't want to put it on the outside. On the other hand, if you put it on the inside of the line, sometimes uh, things can start crowding themselves. So pretty much down the middle is a good place to put it. So I've got three pieces on here, and we just take the last one here, and we'll just put it in the top section here. It's really nice, because otherwise, you're, if you're using a hammer and nails, everything on your table is bouncing all over the place. And sometimes, you know, the wood tends to move around on you as you're hammering it in. Now, one thing I find excellent with this system, too, is if you're soldering a round piece, and obviously this is just a single bevel, but if you had a hummingbird with a border around it, um, it's very hard to keep irregular shapes in place. So with these push up or push pins, uh, we don't use the bars, obviously, we just use the push pins. And you can go along and you can just put as many pins as you need to to keep your project secure so that it's not going to be moving around on you while you're soldering. So all in all, I, I personally really like this uh, Morton layout block system. So once we've got it where we want it, the first thing we want to do is to tack it together. And uh, in a previous video, video, we talked about the different types of solder. And I mentioned that I like to use 50-50 solder to tack the piece together and then also to fill in any gaps. In this case, since uh, I'm only using bevels, there's not a lot of gaps to work with. But nonetheless, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to uh, apply the 50-50 solder. When you're using flux, uh, at the moment, my favorite flux is this Solder Magic Flux. It's a gel flux. Uh, being a gel, it's a little thicker than some of the liquid fluxes, but it's a non-acid flux. And zinc chloride is the most active agent you'll find in most fluxes. Uh, if you look, there's always a skull and crossbones, and that doesn't make me feel like that's something I would like to use. So although the non-acid fluxes aren't as active, they don't move as quickly, they don't act as quickly, they don't sometimes flow quite as nicely, I find with practice you can get used to them and um, they're much better for, for, your, for the environment and for your own health. So I personally would highly recommend that whatever you use, you use something that is a non-acid flux. Uh, being the fact that it's a liquid flux, um, first of all, you don't want to be working out of a bottle. If you are sticking your brush or whatever you're using, a Q-tip, whatever you're using to apply it to the glass, into your bottle, you're bringing contamination into that bottle every time you use it. So what I like to do is just have a baby food jar or some similar kind of a container and pour some of the flux into it. And then, of course, put the lid back on the bottle because that is the next thing that will happen. If you're working out of your little lid, you're going to knock your bottle over and spill flux all over the place. So at least this way, I know that's as much flux as I'm going to uh, pour all over the table. So I have gone back to using a brush. I used to really like using a uh, envelope moistener to apply my flux. Uh, but I find this flux is a little thick to use with that, so I, I've been using a flux brush. Um, and it's a matter of dipping it into my flux. When you're tacking, what you want to do is just get a little bit of solder wherever the pieces come together. So in this case, I've got those four spots. Take my 50-50 solder. Take my iron out of the uh, out of the stand. I like to get in the habit of always wiping it on the sponge before I 
start to solder. So I've wiped it on the sponge. Uh, the tip is nice and tin, uh, nice, nicely tin. And um, so now what I do is I get a drop and I put it right where I want it. Now I think this is a very vital point. When you are soldering, you have to actually have contact. Put that soldering iron right down on top of your key, on top of the glass. So I'm actually touching the copper foil. If you try and just have it slightly above, thinking that it's going to be slightly cooler, first of all, I doubt very much that it's going to be much cooler, even if it was a quarter of an inch away from the top uh, of the glass. And second of all, if you don't actually heat up the foil, the solder doesn't stick to it and it'll just pick off later. So um, do not be afraid to put your solder, uh, soldering iron right onto the copper foil and on top of the glass. So if it's a fairly small piece, you can just, at this point, once it's tacked together and things can't move around, you can remove the push pins and the uh, layout blocks. And I'm going to do that right now because you're going to be able to see a lot better exactly what I'm doing next if I remove these. And I'm going to bring my fume extractor and put it a little closer to where I'm working. Again, I find it works best on its side like this. Okay, now I'm going to go along and again use the 50-50 just to flat solder uh, my piece. And this is a fairly small piece, so I can go along and flex it all at one time. But if I was doing a larger piece, I would only flex a small amount because there is evaporation with liquid fluxes. So if you try and go too far ahead of yourself, you're just going to have to put it back on again. So I've applied the flux, picked up my iron, wiped it on the sponge, taking the solder, holding the iron right down flat. And in this case, I don't want to get much solder on here, so I'm just every once in a while getting a little drop of solder and then pulling the iron along. Since this is such a small piece, I can actually move it around. If it's a bigger piece, of course, then you're going to have to, uh, you can move the whole tile around if it's on a tile. That's a real benefit. If it's actually nailed onto a table, it's much harder to do that. But all I'm trying to do here is A, fill up any gaps that I've got there, and B, get a nice flat surface so that I don't have to uh, slow down when I get to a gap. I, now I'm going to be working with a level playing field, so to speak. Now I want to mention that I only do that to the top of the piece. There is no need to do it to the back. If there were any gaps, it would have um, the solder would have gone between the gaps and given you a level um, surface on the back of the piece, so there's no need to actually go along and tin the back here. This is really all you have to do. So this is the tinning. I've now done that. So I find that it's a good idea to reapply the flux one more time. So now that I'm going to use my 6040, I reapply the flux. Now if you have been doing some soldering and you find that there's a lot of bubbling, the bubbling means you have too much flux, so you need to um, use less. So whether that means you're going to go to an envelope moistener, and this sponge will actually, you know, kind of smear it more so you don't have puddles, um, get less on your brush. Normally when I do get solder flux on my brush, I usually wipe off most of the excess so that I have less on the brush when I'm applying it. So if it's bubbling, you have too much flux. On the other hand, if the solder's not flowing nicely, then you don't have enough. So now I'm going to take my 6040 solder, and I just have a little bit left on this roll, so I'm going to use it up. So I want you to think about two things while you're doing this. The first one is that the soldering iron is going to be right on the glass, and the second thing is that we are going to be letting a little puddle of solder develop behind the soldering iron. And whenever the puddle gets too big, I pull the solder away. And whenever I can see that it's time to add some more, I'll go in there and add a little bit of extra solder. And I'll go right to that spot that I, we're going to have the, uh, where the two lines meet, and I'm going to go back over that. But I'm quite happy with that, actually. It's nice and round. Uh, no imperfections. It's not going to happen on all four, I assure you. But I'm really happy with that. So now I'm just going to turn it around. Continue on. So again, I've got the iron 
flat on the glass. Maybe hold it a little longer when you get to that area where the two lines join. I didn't exactly like the way those, the way those two lines join. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go past the end here and make sure that I've got some actually moving into my next line. So back here where I didn't like it, I'm just going to go back and hold the iron on there for a second and lift it up and it looks much better. You can see though, every time you do that, you're going to make a little mark in the solder, which is it's hard to uh, eliminate. So, uh, you know, if the, the more you can go in one direction without stopping, uh, the better it is. So now I've got part of this done already, so I just have to kind of match the pieces up. So I'll just go along. I'm just going to go right through here and melt it again. It, it's not going to be a problem unless I go too slowly. So now I need a little bit more solder. Got enough solder built up behind here, so I pull it away. Go back. Now, if I had a wider seam, I would not be removing this solder at all. With a wider seam, I would have to be constantly pulling into this because I would need more solder to uh, accomplish what I'm doing here. Also, if I was going to be putting lead on the border of this, or zinc, and that's something we will discuss in a later uh, edge treatment video, um, I would stop a quarter of an inch from all these edges because I may be slipping the lead or the zinc on it afterwards. So whenever I get too much solder that I don't need, I just flick it off. And whenever I want to do a touch up, I just go straight up. And sometimes when you do those touch ups, you have to kind of move all the way around. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a minute, I'm going to solder the back of this, which is exactly the same as the front, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to build up the edges of this piece. Okay, so I soldered the back exactly the same uh, way that I did the front. And now what, what I want to do is build solder up on the edge, because if we don't do that when the glue um, dries out, the adhesive dries out, it's just going to pull away from the edges. So I'd like to show you one way to build up the solder. So the first thing we do is we go along and flux it. I've already done that to uh, front and back. And the first thing I want to do is I want to tin the front surface of the copper foil. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the back. Okay, so I've, uh, I've got a thin layer of solder on the front and the back, and the reason I do that is, the next thing I'm going to do is, is add one drip at a time along the edge here. And when I do that, um, sometimes the solder doesn't go all the way to the edge of the glass, so by tinning it first, that's not going to be an issue. Um, as with when I was building up the solder on, uh, on the front and back of the piece, I'm going to reapply the flux again now to the edge. And I've, I've moved my uh, fume extractor to a position where it's going to be able to draw a lot better than when it was sitting down. As a matter of fact, this is a good time for you to, to see exactly how well it works. You can see the fumes being drawn into the machine. So what I do is I just pick up a drop. And I find that you pretty much have to do this in two motions. So I do it once just to get the right amount of solder on there. I flex it one more time wipe my sponge to get any dross off and now I'm just going to go one drip or one uh, tip with a tin, uh, solder iron tip with each way to just draw the solder along and try and even it out. And so of course I'll do the same thing all the way around all, all four sides. So I hope that's given you some good insights into the proper um, methods to use for soldering your pieces. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.